Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Inhaled Insulin, glucose management in the moment. By Omnipod 5, the only tubeless pump that integrates with Dexcom G6. By Dexcom G7, the number one recommended CGM brand. And by Edge Park. Simplify your diabetes journey with Edge Park. This is Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. This week, a new project to show an adventurous side of diabetes. A documentary called Beyond Limits about extreme athletes with type 1. The filmmakers are interviewing snowboarders, kayakers, and professional athletes like Indy driver Connor Daly. He's sitting in a 140 degree race car for five hours going 240 miles per hour. As someone who's type 1 diabetic, you're like, how do you do that? Director Dylan Leonard, who lives with type 1, talks to me about why he wanted to make this movie, how they're going about it, and why in an age when we can see people with T1D doing all sorts of amazing things, like playing in the NFL or serving on the Supreme Court, he thinks this type of film is still needed. This podcast is not intended as medical advice. If you have those kinds of questions, please contact your healthcare provider. Welcome to another week of the show. Always so glad to have you here. You know we aim to educate and inspire about diabetes with a focus on people who use insulin. I want to welcome a few new listeners who found me through the webinar I did last week. We did a back to school with diabetes webinar all about the best advice I ever got. If you missed that and you are interested, I do have information on the website now. This was a very popular webinar, so I decided to make the information available. You can go over to diabetes-connections.com. It'll pop up. If it doesn't pop up, head over to shop, but it's a free download. We've got a bunch of free downloads there. If you haven't tooled around the site, there's lots of good stuff. All right. Well, like a lot of you, I saw Breaking Limits, this new movie being promoted on Instagram and social media. Actor Derek Thieler is a producer on the movie. He's been on the podcast before and his posts caught my eye. So I reached out to Dylan, our guest today, to learn more. What's interesting is that at the same time, I heard about another diabetes movie project in the works. This one is called The Cost. It is a fictional thriller, but it is based on the very true story about the high cost of insulin to so many in the United States. It's a very different project, but both of these have GoFundMe, Kickstarter-type fundraisers going on right now. And, you know, podcasting can be very weird in terms of timing. I'm going to talk to both of these folks. You're, You're hearing from Dylan and Breaking Limits today. And I'm scheduled to talk to the folks from The Cost, but that episode will air probably after their GoFundMe is finished. So I wanted to make sure to tell you about both in case you want to contribute, you know, to one or both of them, just so you have all of the information. So I'm linking up information to both in the show notes. Just go to diabetes-connections.com. Links will take you to both of their pages. You can see videos and learn a lot more. They both have rewards for donating in your typical Kickstarter style. But today you are going to be hearing from director Dylan Leonard talking about breaking limits. They are in the middle of shooting this. This is all about extreme athletes, you know, people doing really extreme things with type 1 diabetes. I'm thrilled that he talked to me about this. And I'm really, um, I'm glad he was open to asking some of my questions. You'll hear in the interview. I was wondering out loud, I'm curious what you think. Maybe we'll talk about it in the Facebook group or in the newsletter polling. You know, do we need these kinds of movies anymore? As I mentioned in the opening tease, you know, we've got professional football players, we've got Supreme Court justices, we've got people at NASA, right? Do we need to be, and this sounds silly when I ask it this way, but do we need to be inspired this way? So we'll talk about it, Dylan Leonard and Breaking Limits, right after this. When it comes right down to it, there hasn't been a lot of innovation for insulin. Sure, there are different brands, but nothing really unique when it comes to insulin delivery, except for a Frezza. Afreza is unique because it is the only ultra-rapid-acting inhaled insulin available. It starts working quickly without the need for injections at mealtime. Once you breathe Afreza into your lungs using the inhaler, insulin appears in your bloodstream in less than one minute, and it may start reducing blood sugar in about 12 minutes. Find out more, see if Afreza is right for you. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Afreza logo. Afreza can cause serious side effects, including sudden lung problems and low potassium. It is not for patients with chronic lung disease such as asthma or COPD or for patients allergic to insulin. Tell your doctor if you ever smoked, have ever had kidney or liver problems, a history of lung cancer, or if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Most common side effects are low blood sugar, cough, and sore throat. Severe low blood sugar can be fatal. Do not replace long-acting insulin with Afreza. Afreza is not for use to treat diabetic ketoacidosis. Please see full prescribing information, including boxed warning, medication guide, and instructions for use on afreza.com slash safety. (laughs) 
Dylan, welcome to Diabetes Connections. I'm really glad you're here. Thank you so much for having me, Stacy. Yeah. Tell me about Breaking Limits. What is this documentary all about? I come from a background of sports. I was diagnosed as a type 1 diabetic at 15 years old at the beginning of my sophomore year of high school. And I had every aspiration of being a college basketball player later on with the goal of playing professionally. And there weren't really any resources out there. And I was kind of in the camp of trying to hide my diabetes. And I found myself not treating it as well as I probably should have, but I also didn't know. And my mom gave me the freedom to be extremely independent. And I really learned, but I was old school. I didn't have a CGM. I didn't have a pump. So everything was manual based on how I was feeling. And there were days I was working out so much where I did not have any insulin. And breaking limits was kind of the answer to that. Because as I got older, I've always been active. I've gone and done four-day treks through the jungle where you have no service. And if you don't pack enough things, if you don't have the right supplies, like you're in trouble. And so as a type 1 diabetic, for me personally, I never let that stop me. But I know that that isn't the case for everyone. And I had the reaction that I imagine so many people listening or like the kids of people listening would have had where, you know, you cry, you think your life is over, you think you're never going to be able to do the things that, you know, a normal kid or person would be able to do. And so my partner, Derek Thieler, who is also a type 1 diabetic and, a, and an actor, he and I had talked about this idea where we would create a documentary film that covers extreme sports athletes. So we're not just talking about baseball, basketball, football, you know, your common sports here in the U.S. We wanted to go deeper than that and cover extreme sports. Uh, we've got Sean Busby, who's a backcountry snowboarder, who's got lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, epilepsy, and type 1 diabetes. And he's out there, you know, in the mountains every single day. Um, we've got Fiona Wild, who is a three-time world champion competitive paddleboarder. Sage Donnelly, who's on Team USA kayaking and does expedition kayak trips. Connor Daly, IndyCar driver, finished eight at the Indy 500 this year. Jordan Morris on the Seattle Sounders and U.S. men's national team. Uh, super talented soccer player. We've got Katie Bone, who won American Ninja Warrior as well. Hopefully I'm not missing anyone. <laughs> you know, these are sports where if you were type 1 diabetic and you wanted to get into those extreme sports, you would probably be met with a lot of hesitation by doctors, by parents, things like that. And so we wanted this to be a kind of a comprehensive resource as well as a source of inspiration. And we're including top doctors as well. So Dr. Ann Peters, who's a world-renowned endocrinologist and as we go through this film, the, the real goal is that if someone is to be diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and you feel like there's this hopelessness, that the doctor can put this film on for you and your family and you can see these extremely talented human beings who are not just professional athletes, but they're champions and competing at the top of their field as type 1 diabetics. So it's not just hey, oh, you guys made it even though you're type 1 diabetic. You know, it's like, no, you're actually winning and doing things that people who don't have to deal with this are. And so as we follow these athletes, we're covering, you know, their day-to-day, -day, how they're preparing for competitions, kind of tips and tricks and workarounds and things that they've dealt with so that your average type 1 diabetic can have insight into this world that there really is no information on. I have a lot of questions, but I do want to point out, it's interesting, um, Ann Peters, I recently had an episode with a panel that was sponsored by Tandem Diabetes and Ryan Reed, you know, NASCAR driver, he mentioned her as the person who turned things around for him. So I'm curious, like with the medical professionals who are speaking in the documentary, are they talking about their specific experiences with these individuals or, and you alluded to this, are they talking about how, you know, an ordinary quote unquote person with type one who may never drive a, you know, in the indie races or, you know, be a competitive kayaker, what they can pull from this? Yeah. So I think the goal, because my background, I grew up with a single mom. She worked multiple jobs. We couldn't afford to have a CGM and we couldn't afford to have an insulin pump. So I didn't have those things until I was about 24, 25. 
part of the the motivation for me is to make something that has all of these resources and information that like unless you go see Dr. Peters yourself mm-hmm. or you are these athletes or friends with these athletes, you'll have no idea. Dylan, I'm curious. You said you were 15 when you were diagnosed. Do you mind telling me what year that was? Yeah, it was uh, 2011. So I am currently 27. So it'll be 13 years this September I will have been diagnosed. The reason I asked you that, I'm surprised by your answer, not because I thought you were younger or older or anything like that, but because by 2011, you would think that your diagnosis would come with a big side of, you can do this. You don't have to stop doing this. That by 2011, which is a good five years after my two-year-old was diagnosed, we would not be hearing this same old, no, you can't with type one. But that wasn't the case for you. It wasn't that I was told I shouldn't do things. It was more so the sentiment of like, you should be careful and you should not take risks and you should not put yourself in situations. And like just a little bit more background, like I never let this stop me. I never intended to let it stop me. I traveled around South America for six months and brought all my insulin with me and did my best to keep it cool while (laughs) on buses through Colombia and Brazil. But like, it was something where I was like, I took this and I said, I'm going to prove that I can do more than, you know, a normal person, you know, with type one diabetes behind me. So it was just something that I noticed more so in the diabetic community. And I also didn't know anyone with type one diabetes growing up. And I imagined that if I felt the way I felt that there were either a lot of type one diabetics out there who felt the same or were going through the same or there were a lot of type 1 diabetics out there that were afraid to pursue certain things because I snowboard, I skateboard, I, like I said, gone on these multi-day treks through, you know, jungles and mountains and play basketball and swim. And, and, you know, I never, there's never really anything where I'm like, oh, I can't do this because I'm type 1 diabetic. Now, have there been complications and situations where I learned from it? Absolutely. Uh, My girlfriend and I hiked the active volcano in Guatemala and Uh, By the time I got to the top, I was like, well, I just ate everything sugar wise that I brought with me (laughs) on the way up because of the lows. And we had another eight miles of hiking to do and, and no other food. And, you know, it was it was difficult. My body was not handling it well. And it's just something that you learned. And, and I've had awesome situations where people around me stepped up and offered Gatorade or a juice or something that they had on them, which I think has been amazing to see as well, to see other people kind of sacrifice the stuff for themselves to help somebody else, a complete stranger. Yeah. Dylan, I hesitate to ask this and I will probably get some angry email about it. But when I saw this project, I have to say, I felt like, why do we really need something like this? Because I'm a, I'm a very fortunate person. Like we have access, you know, we're, we were able to get a great physician right away. I mean, I get all of that. But my son was diagnosed in 2006, and he grew up, he was two years old, and he saw, you know, Mark Andrews playing football. He saw Derek Thieler being an actor if he wanted to do that. I've had most of the people you mentioned on the podcast to talk about their experiences with extreme sports. So I don't want to sound overly critical because I think this is great and I'm excited you're doing it. But oh my gosh. But I have to ask you, like, what makes this different? When you're deciding on a brand of insulin pump, there are a lot of things to think about, especially if you've never used a pump before. It can seem overwhelming. There are a lot of choices and you want to make the right decision. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about Omnipod 5. Curious about trying an insulin pump or seeing what life without tubes is all about? Unlike traditional tubed pumps, you can try Omnipod without being locked into a four-year contract. You might even be eligible for a free trial. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Omnipod logo. For full safety, risk information, and free trial terms and conditions, visit Omnipod.com slash Diabetes Connections. Now back to my conversation with Dylan, where he's answering my question about what makes this project different. There's a famous saying in the world of film, and it's show, don't tell, right? Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to hear someone say something. It's one thing to hear someone talk about something. It's another thing to see someone actually going through something in front of your eyes 
and to be able to empathize and put yourself in their shoes and wonder what it's like. You know, this is kind of where those misconceptions come in because somebody who says, oh, you know, type 1 diabetes is no big thing, right? You know, all of us with type 1 diabetes try to look at it like that, you know, that it's something that isn't going to stop us. But the average person being able to see what Jordan has to go through or what Sage has to go through, right? We posted a clip of Jordan talking about how when he scored a goal for the U.S. men's national team for the first time, he went into a stall to take a shot of insulin because he didn't want to be a distraction to the team. And he and I were talking and one of the things he said was that, you know, come game time, all he wants to do is, is focus on the game, right? And that's all anyone wants to do who's a competitive athlete. You want to focus on your team. You don't want to be a distraction. And Jordan said for him, like all he can think about is making sure his blood sugar is in the right range so that he then doesn't become a problem on the field or a distraction on the field where let's say it's a critical moment and he needs to go kick a penalty kick, the chance to win. Whatever the situation might be, what if his blood sugar goes low or he's super high and he can't perform at his best because he didn't prepare? These are variables that most people don't have to deal with. And so showing what that looks like and and being able to capture all of the additional things that someone with type 1 diabetes does have to do and also providing the resource, like I said earlier, for people who don't have access to that stuff. You know, like I know you you said you're lucky that you have access to that stuff. But there's a large portion of the population that doesn't. And those are the people we usually don't hear from because they don't have the platform or the ability to really speak up on it. Maybe they just don't know. I was one of those people that this film is the film that I wish was created when I was diagnosed. What have you learned from the people you've talked to so far that surprised you? It's just awesome to see these people firsthand going through um, the intense, intense training and, and competition that they go through and seeing how, you know, when we were in Indianapolis with Connor, he's sitting in a 140 degree race car for five hours going 240 miles per hour as someone who's type 1 diabetic, you're like, how do you do that? That's just a really difficult thing for anyone. So I think seeing what, you know, these athletes different kind of processes are, like Connor eats the same thing every day before a race, his regimen just like super under control. Jordan, you know, is kind of on the the lower carb diet stuff and wears his Omnipod and he's got his process like I didn't even know that you could get uh, adrenaline highs. And Jordan told me that that was like his most difficult adjustment from going from college to pros was dealing with a 300 plus blood sugar right before a game because of the adrenaline and Sage talking about the inability to stay like level with blood sugar, carrying a kayak with 100 pounds of food and water and equipment through 13 mile hikes through the mountains, you know, and so hearing all of their stories and the things that they do, it's actually inspired me just at this point in time to take better control of my own diabetes and to be more regimented in my own life. And so I think uh, seeing that just at this point in time, not even getting super far into it, it's only just a taste of what the rest of the world will get when we have this thing completely finished. As a director, how does type 1 come into your job. Can you talk a little bit about how you manage and some of the challenges you have? Yeah. So starting off in sports, since I played basketball in college, that's kind of where all of this came from. You know, I was super concerned in the recruiting process that if anybody found out I was type one diabetic, it would be a reason that they didn't want me on the team because it would be an extra thing for them to have to deal with. Right. And you don't want to be difficult right off the bat. So you know, you worry about that stuff. And then, you know, you get on a team and you're the freshman. And now, you know, you're in a running drill and you have to sit out in the middle of a running drill. Like your team is sitting there wondering if you're just kind of faking it. So it was all of that, which obviously comes from mental side of things and emotional side of things. But leading into kind of where I'm at directing in film is that it's something that I used to try and hide 
because I, once again, I didn't want a client to not hire me because I posed this extra risk. So when, you know, something would happen, I would never tell people like, oh, I just need to have like an extra thing of juice or something, you know, whatever I needed to, to kind of raise my blood sugar if something happened. And I, we had an Instagram live today with Derek and and Neil, who's an awesome educator in the world of type one diabetes. He runs a, an account where he posts an educational video every day. And one of the things that Derek had happened to him was, you know, he was on set and waited until golden hour. You know, you've got this whole crew, you got thousands and thousands of dollars on the line for this one shot to take place. And he accidentally took twice the amount of insulin he needed because he thought he had a messed up pump site. And all of a sudden, you know, that time is on the line. And now everyone's waiting for Derek to, you know, get his blood sugar up. I think he said he was at 50 with double arrows down. And so there's this pressure of like, if you're the one who messes up, right, if I'm the one who we're in our final shot of the day, and it's the most important time and lighting and everything going on. And I'm the reason that that gets messed up. You know, you can't help but worry that you know, someone doesn't want to bring you back or you get once again labeled as difficult. And so I think from a directing side of things, it's a little bit less affected than like in a physical space of sports, because you're not as um, I guess it's it's no more different than kind of your everyday life that that you'd be going through in terms of managing type one. But there are definitely moments where, you know, you're thinking about it or you have to get the shot. And I just I'm like, I'm going low and I'm like, I don't care. I'm just going to get the shot and then I'll deal with it after. And and hopefully I'm alive, which isn't the message we want to send. But <laughs> <laughs> that is the real message. I can't tell you this is a very silly microcosm of that. And I know most of the parents listening can relate. I can't tell you how many times my son has been low at the end of a video game. Right. He doesn't want to stop. He's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to finish this task. I know I'm low, but I'm going to get through it and then I'm going to treat. And it's like, yeah, we get it. We get it. Yeah. But that's like the metaphor for life, right? It doesn't matter what you're doing. It's still, you know, it's something that I'm sure if I'm thinking it, if your son is thinking it, there's a lot of other people out there thinking it, right? And oh, yeah. it's not necessarily the safest thing to do. And I'm sure we've all found ourselves, I personally am not the greatest at, at always having something on me in terms of sugar. And that's the other thing that's been awesome about this project is I remember an instance in uh, Long Beach when we were filming with Connor and I went low and Derek and Connor both had something on them and I had never experienced that before. And it was like, there's no frustration for any of us because we all know what the other person is going through. And it's like, no, take your time, you know, make sure you feel all right. And you know, we're all there to support each other. And so aside from the overarching message of the film, it's like we want to use this to to bring together an even larger community around type 1 diabetes and, and sport, whether someone has aspirations of being a professional or whether they just want to play for fun. Um, I think all of it is applicable and, and it's it's stuff that you really can't get without having experienced it yourself. So who better to get that information from than these people who've been doing it for, you know, 10 years or 15 years and at the highest level. Before I let you go, toward the beginning of our our conversation, you mentioned when you were diagnosed, your parents, your mom really wanted you to be very independent. And you've talked a lot about travel that you've done. Do you mind taking a moment to talk about your mom and kind of how you and she navigated that? Because I know it was before CGM and share and follow and that kind of stuff. But I'm curious, you know, what she did right that we can take away from that. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing. I think the allowing me to be independent was what she did right because I notice a lot of these athletes the mindset they have in common was that, you know, they they would, you know, take it under control. And that and that's not to say that that their parents weren't bothering them or whatever. Like there were times in high school where I forgot my insulin at home and my mom had to drive, you know, she had to leave work, go home, get my insulin, bring it to me at school, all that kind of stuff. But I think it was just trust. You know, she trusted that I was responsible and she didn't want to stop me. And she knew that I wouldn't let her, to be honest. She never fought me on it. She was always super supportive in what I was doing. And she would ask, my mom's background is in health and fitness. She works with Uh, cancer patients and teaches people all over the world how to help cancer patients recover after chemotherapy and major surgeries. So she was no stranger to how the body works and, and what goes on. And I think the biggest thing looking back that I wish for both of us was that we just understood 
better what type 1 diabetes was and how our bodies as type 1 diabetics react to certain foods and things like that. I think if I was younger and I had a CGM earlier, it would have been worth whatever the financial burden was because it is such a great tool. But I also always made sure my friends around me knew what I was dealing with. And so I always taught my friends how to use the glucagon. And and if this ever happens, and luckily I've never had to use it, but um, I've definitely had situations where like my friends bring snacks for me. You know, if we're going hiking or we're doing something or playing basketball, they're like, oh, I brought something just in case, which I can't tell you how much that means to me. And so I think it's something that makes that gap of like not having your parent control everything around you. It's like having those people in your life that really help you out and make things easier versus trying to hide it and and not let anyone know. But yeah, I kind of was probing in, in some of the Facebook groups with parents with kids with type 1 diabetes asking questions around sports. And it seems like the sentiment with a lot of them is that, you know, they don't want anything to stop their child. They don't want their child to feel like they can't do anything, which I think is amazing. And I think that's the narrative that we should obviously send, given that's what we're doing with this film, Breaking Limits. But I think that it still doesn't change the fact of how much guessing is involved, right? You know, if you're a newly diagnosed parent and your kid is is figuring this out and you know I went I went to the gym the day after I got out of the hospital I was in there for 5 days I had lost 40 pounds I gained all the weight back and wasn't able to walk because it was such a drastic change on my wow. body and then the day after I got out I went straight to the gym to go play pickup basketball and my vision went completely blurry because I imagined my body was just flushing out everything and, you know, looking back on that, was that a smart idea? Absolutely not. I had no idea how to manage this thing. And I remember all I had with me was a thing of glucose tabs to make sure, you know, if I went low, I would be fine. But I didn't know, you know, I didn't know anything at that point yeah. in time. So education with this stuff, it's not fun, but I think it's our best friend. And I'm, I'm constantly learning every day on this journey. I think we all are. And it's just one of those things that if more people can can understand it more and more parents can understand it more and build that trust with their kids. I think it puts the kid in such a better place to kind of propel forward and, and be independent in that stuff. And obviously, it's not a one size fits all. Every family is different. Every relationship is different. And I'm not going to tell anybody how to parent their kids. But those are just, you know, my perspectives from where I came from. Well, Dylan, thank you so much for coming on and talk to me about this. Keep us posted. Definitely drop in as you're filming over the next year and as you get a release date. I'd love to talk to you again and find out more about where the project is. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me on. And, and I'm super excited to share this with everyone. You're listening to Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. More information about breaking limits, just go to diabetes-connections.com. And click on the episode homepage. You will find links to the GoFundMe, to videos, and a lot more. I'll be right back with wins and fails for this week. Something really great going on for dads in our community. And that's next. When I think about our family's use of CGM and Dexcom, it is getting harder and harder to remember how we did things before. I mean, how did we manage when Benny needed something like 10 finger sticks a day when he was a toddler? We thought it was amazing to switch to Dexcom when it needed to be calibrated twice a day. Well, now that Dexcom G6 eliminates finger sticks for calibration and diabetes treatment decisions, Benny's fingertips looked awful when he was in elementary school. You know, when they were wet, you could really see how pitted and scarred up they were from all of those finger sticks. Now they are healthy and smooth, which I never thought would happen back then. But to me, it's everything. Learn more. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Dexcom logo. All right, this week, wins and fails. I actually don't have any fails this week, but I have two wins, so it's all good news. I did not receive this email. I should say Benny did not receive this email, but another tandem T-Slim pump user did, and they sent it over to me, so thank you for that. In this email, Tandem says they are excited to announce they are nearing the limited launch of enhanced integration, which will enable it to be compatible with multiple sensors 
including the Dexcom G6 and Dexcom G7. For existing T-Slim X2 users, this integration will become available through a remote software update. So if you got this email, lucky you, you were asked to get on the list, answer some questions, and see if you were eligible for the limited launch. No dates here. I have reached out to Tandem. I'm hoping to have them on the show soon to talk about this and a bunch of other stuff they've got in the works. But it looks like we are getting closer to G7 integration for Tandem. The other win for the week is for dads. And I get asked all the time if I know of any resources for dads of kids with diabetes. And so I'm really thrilled to pass this along. If you know the group Children with Diabetes, they put on the Big Friends for Life conference every summer, and they have regional meetups as well. In fact, they've got a regional conference coming up in October in White Plains, New York, just outside New York City. But there is a group of moms that has met there for years called Moffles, Moms of Friends for Life, M-O-F-F-L, Moffles. What's nice about this group is that they meet at the in-person events, but they meet virtually as well. And dads, they've got a group for you as well. Doffles virtual meetups. I'm sorry, I know it sounds silly, but it's Doffles, Dads of Friends for Life. So D O F F L S, Doffles. I will link up the Children with Diabetes Facebook page. I think that's the best place to get the information here. They also have a newsletter. I'll try to link that up as well. If you're not part of Friends for Life, just reach out to them. This is a pretty amazing group. I don't think they would turn a dad away, but I did want to pass along the information because they're having their next virtual meeting. September 14th in the evening. Very cool stuff and a win for our community. Thanks as always to my editor, John Buchanan from Audio Editing Solutions. Thank you so much for joining me. We do have a newscast coming up this Friday. There is a lot to tell you about. And if you haven't signed up for Mom's Night Out and you live in Rhode Island, Texas or North Carolina, don't wait. Check it out. More information at diabetes-connections.com. All right, I'm Stacey Sims. I'll see you back here soon. Until then, be kind to yourself. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged. Life is busy. Managing diabetes is a daily commitment. Edge Park can help you say goodbye to the worry of managing your diabetes supplies with a variety of cutting-edge insulin delivery systems from brands like Medtronic and Tandem. Plus, Edge Park accepts most insurance plans and handles the paperwork so you can simplify your life your diabetes care, and your budget in one click. Go to diabetes-connections.com and look for the Edge Park logo.